Hello there, if you're watching this video then I'm guessing that you are the parent of an anxious teenager and you're struggling to know how to communicate with them and help them through this difficult time that they're going through. If that sounds like you then obviously you care a lot about your teen and you want what's best for them but sometimes it's hard to relate to what they're going through if you haven't struggled with anxiety yourself. So I just want to explain a little bit about how anxiety works. But before I do that, you may be thinking, who am I and how am I qualified to tell you this? Well, my name is Jennifer Roblin. I am an anxiety specialist and I have worked with hundreds and hundreds of teenagers and young adults and adults in the workplace to help them get to the root cause of what is making them feel anxious. Now, anxiety is a feeling of fear it's completely natural and it's instinctive. So it's an elite, uh, sorry, it's an evolutionary process. And we have anxiety because its sole purpose is to keep us safe. Now, when we were all living in caves, there was a lot of danger all around us. There were tigers, there were dangerous animals everywhere. We had to be part of a tribe to be able to hunt fish keep the campfire going, sleep. We couldn't do all of those things individually. So we had to be part of a tribe and our tribe meant everything to us because when we were ostracized, we were dead. And children feel that same fear. If they fall out with their friendship groups, they feel that they're under threat. They feel that they're isolated and they don't necessarily have the skill set at this point in time to realize that friendships can come and go. So it's important to remind them that friendships aren't always permanent. They, people can come in and out of our lives and they've probably done the same with other people. And it's just a case of discussing with it, not, not telling them right or wrong, but just discussing with them how friendships change over time. Try and normalize the anxiety because it, it is normal. It is something that we all struggle with at some point in time. So try and normalize it and let them know that they're not broken. A lot of teenagers that come to me, they believe they are broken. They feel that they are damaged in some way, but remind them that anxiety is completely and utterly normal. And it's our body's way of keeping us safe. So we have our fight and flight response so that we can stay alert, avoid danger, and carry on doing exactly what we were designed to do reproduce and keep the species going. So one of the other things that you might want to talk to them about is um, different words, different feeling words, so that they can understand that all emotions come and go and fear and anxiety, stress included. Just the same way as that we're not happy 100% of the time, we're not sad 100% of the time, we're not fearful 100% of the time, all of our emotions come and go. So help them to understand that it's a flow. It's a flow of emotions that we go through and we have the ability to change how we feel. So what is it that they used to do when they were younger? Because quite often that's the thing that we're passionate about. So did they like dancing? Did they like football? Did they like painting, drawing? Try and tap into what it was that they used to like and see if you can encourage them to get back into that activity because that will help them build up their confidence again build up their self-esteem and help them to feel better about themselves. Now, sometimes when teenagers are anxious, the behavior can be interpreted, interpreted as naughty behavior, um, such as avoiding school. Just bear in mind that they are genuinely fearful about something. Something is frightening them. And they may not understand exactly what that is, but that fear that threat is very real to them. So, so hear them out when they're trying to talk to you about it. Don't, don't try and tell them that it's not true or you know, the situation isn't how they believe it because they won't believe otherwise at this point in time. So it's a case of trying to build up their self-esteem and then when you look back at that event, they can often realize that it wasn't as scary as it seems. So if you're aware that they've had anxiety previously, what was it they were anxious about? And when that situation arose, was it as bad as they expected? Because the chances are it wasn't. So if you can just help them 
understand a few of those things, help communicate with them, give them different feeling words that they can use so they're not just anxious all the time. They might be tired, they might be hungry, they could be frustrated, they could be bored, they could be overwhelmed. There's so many other feeling words that we can use to help describe exactly what's going on for us. And, and anxiety has become the default word that wraps everything else up but that's not always the case so just try and talk to them about feeling words that you have at home so i hope that's helpful and if you've enjoyed that then please like and subscribe to my channel and if you need further help um, there's a link in the chat where we can have a no obligation chat if you want to talk anything through with me and i can see how else i can help you so i hope you enjoyed that and i will see you again soon thank you